Lord. But I'm just thankful. I really, I really have just been in my spirit. I just sense that God wants to do something great. Not to, not to put down anything that he's already done. I feel like we have so many success stories. We have heard miracles. We have testimonies, healings, all kinds of things that are happening because of your faithfulness, because of your prayers, because you believe this word. You believe that God still does what he said he's going to do. And so we're seeing that. And it's awesome because he confirms his word with signs following. He's not going to, he said his word will not return void, but it will accomplish that what he sent it to do. So let's pray together before we get into this. Father, I thank you this morning that they've already read the outline at least five times. Lord, they've got it memorized better than I do. But this time that we have together, Lord, I just thank you that you would speak and distribute by your spirit accordingly to everyone as they need. And we give you glory for it in advance. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. I love that scripture. He says he divides to what everyone needs. So we could all be hearing the same message, but everyone gets something different out of it. That's the great God we serve. I, after first service, a couple of people came up and I was like, I don't even remember saying that, but that's okay. What, if you heard it and you got something out of it, praise God. That's great. Sometimes I don't remember. It's probably good that I don't remember what I say sometimes. Amen. <laughs> so pastor has been on his heart in the last few weeks just about men of God, understanding that we're created in God's image. We're created him. And if we realize that, it just scares the heck out of the devil. And so pastor talked about God was looking for men that are faithful, men that are teachable, and men that are able to teach others. And if you look across statistically, and I'm not dogging the men that are here, because you're here. You're not, one of the, you're not one of the statistics. But statistically, women are more engaged in church. They're more active. They're more, they're more you know, connected, I would say. Have you noticed that, too, with the growth tracks? Oh, so it is our church. Okay, so we got to do something about this. Amen? So we're going to recruit some more men, get together. But just being able, and I was trying to uh, just been praying with pastor about this, this, this transition time, this season. It's so awesome because I feel in my spirit, it's a time for expansion. It's a time for addition. I feel like God wants to add to your lives. As I was praying last Tuesday, I was over here and we just took up an offering and it was just that God wants to add avenues of revenue into your life. So if anybody, anybody down for that? All right, nobody in here, I'll take it. That's fine. Avenues of revenue beyond your normal income. I believe God wants to increase you so he can build his kingdom, so he can expand what he's doing. I feel like it's a season of transition. There's just a fire. There's just something special. God, yes, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but his mercy is new every morning. There's something special about being in the right place at the right time in the right season. Some of you say, you know, it's been a long time. Well, guess what? Don't grow weary. I'm sorry, I'm too loud, huh? Turn me down a little bit. We, we, get to, we don't want to be, we don't wanna be uh, scaring anybody this morning. Amen. We'll keep them fired up. Amen. The right place, the right time. It's a season. Galatians 6, 9 says what? Don't grow weary in well-doing because in due season, you're going to reap the harvest if you don't faint. We're coming into a season where I believe God is going to bring some things into fruition. You're going to see some things that maybe you've been praying for for a year, maybe five years, maybe 10 years. I'm believing for some things that I've seen people that have gone on to be with the Lord, prayed for before I was even alive, and I haven't even seen some of those things come to pass yet, and I feel by the Spirit of God, there's things that are going to be happening and changing. People are looking. People are sensitive. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In fact, we don't even need the outline because you guys already read it. I'll just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you didn't read it? Why not? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. Amen. John 10, 10. I love this scripture because it's basically you see the enemy's plan and then you see God's plan. The, John 10, 10, if you have your Bible, you can look it up, or if they might have it up on the screen for us. It says, the thief. Everybody say the thief. the thief. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. God wants us to be able to enjoy the abundant life. Is it without obstacles? No. Is it without opposition? No. But we are the victorious one. Greater is he that is in you 
than he that is in the world. This morning, I want to inspire you. I want to motivate you. I want to challenge you to dig deep, to clarify the vision, to understand your unique gifts, talents, and abilities so that we can help you develop them for the glory of God. There's nothing more fulfilling in your life than when you're walking in God's plan and purpose for you. It's just, there's nothing that will bring you a greater joy than reaching somebody for Jesus, than, than walking in what God's called you to do. And when you're in that flow, when you're in that function, you just know. You know that you know that you know, and no one can talk you out of it when you're walking with him. Illumination brings clarification. I feel like there's just been a spirit of confusion that has been trying to, um, trying to confuse people in the body of what they're supposed to be doing, what their gifts are. We should be acting like this. Should we be acting like that? What, how's the church structure? I mean, just, you just see all this different things happening, but it's like a counterfeit. They even have got to the point where they're taking real dollar bills and then they print a hundred dollar bill onto it so that it feels like the right paper. And the enemy is a master at taking a little bit of truth and mixing in the lie so people buy it, so people get fooled by it. And I love the illustration, I've shared it so many times, and it's just that, but Brenna, my wife, used to work at the bank, and so she, they would train them on how to recognize counterfeits by just going through the reel. They would have them count real money all the time. Just count it, even though I had the machines that counted for you, why do I need to count the money? They wanted them to be familiar with the truth, with the real. So when the counterfeit came, you could recognize it. And that's what I feel like the Spirit of God is doing for us. He says in Joshua 1, 9, meditate on my word day and night. Then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. We meditate on the truth of his word. We meditate on what his plan is. And then when the enemy tries to bring some other avenue or some other way, a counterfeit, we recognize it and discard it. We're not going to accept that. Sorry, that's not God's plan. I got his plan right here. His word is his will. His word is his way. His word is his plan. If we know his word, we know his voice. We recognize the truth through his word. And so the entrance of his word gives light. Confusion has a hard time hanging out in the light because you can see very clearly. It's easy to stub your toe in the dark. It's easy to walk into a wall. It's easy to, to miss your way in the dark. But when the light comes, hello, there's no hiding. There's no, there's no, I'm not going to walk into the chairs when the lights are on, but I can tell you I've walked in this room when the lights are off and I've walked right into the chairs. I know how they're set up. I've been in this sanctuary, I don't know, thousands of times. But if it's dark, Amen. I can't see. But God's illuminating things in a way because you've been asking, you've been praying, you've been seeking. Asking, seeking, and knocking. And I'm here to tell you the doors are going to open for you. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. Continue to press towards the mark of the high call. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but what be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So we're talking about men, but we're also talking about every, everyone. Sometimes God distinctly speaks to men as men in the word of God, and other times he's speaking to all men as mankind. And so he has specific purposes for each and every one of us. But I feel like men, sometimes they get the bad rap, but a lot of, they have a lot of responsibility. There's lots of things happening. And so, but God can use all these things. And I think what pastor's concern is, is that it's just stripping men of their manhood. And so we don't want that. God wants men to be men, warriors, protectors, providers, leaders. Amen? And if we get that, then we'll be good men. We'll be good husbands. We'll be good fathers. The problem is a lot of men have never been taught that. We go to juvenile hall. We see these young people in the schools. Their fathers aren't there. Pastor read the statistics last week. I didn't get to hear them all, but I already know what they are. Most, most homes, they don't have their father. They don't have, and, and, even, and even sometimes circumstances in divorced homes, they're not with their fathers as much, but they do what they can. It's still hard. It's still hard on everybody. And so we want to pray for God to equip the men, to encourage the men so we can get them plugged in and help them develop and do and be everything that God's called them to be. So five T's that will transform your life. There's a lot. Five T's, but I think I'm pretty fast, so you don't have to worry. I'm not known to go too long, usually. Have I? <laughs> 
especially on Tuesday night. We're out of here on time when I'm preaching. I got bed. I got to go to bed. Amen. Five T's that will transform your life. We talked a little about the first one already. The truth. Understanding the truth. When we were even in prayer together, it's been so clear to me that God is going to bring a manifestation of his truth. A manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. When you see the truth, you will recognize the lie. We understand that God has a plan and a purpose, and it's going to happen through your life. I'm so excited that I'm part of a church who believes the word of God. It's, I mean, I love the experiences. I love the testimonies. I love all that. But guess what? It's because this word produces. This word has power. So from this pulpit, everybody that preaches in here or gets to preach more in here preaches the word of God. Why? Because that's what produces. So we're thankful for that. We're not, we're not walking by what we see. We walk by faith and not by sight. We're not, we're not walking around by what we're hearing. Our faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So there's a difference. And so you're in the right place at the right time. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's a lot of other ideas, but if you want to know the truth, you must know Jesus and know his word. We are the voice of truth in the earth. We are. I don't know how many of you have seen lately, but I haven't seen them anywhere where God sent some angels and they stood on the corner or they were on TV and they came down and said, I'm the angel of the Lord. I have some a message to tell you. It's, he's using people. He's using us. He's working through us by his spirit to reach the loss. It's awesome. We're, we're, we're the ones that God has chosen to, to fulfill his plan through. And you get to live in a day and time like we live right now. It's awesome. Talk about crazy. Yeah, but it's exciting. I'd rather have that than be bored. Amen. Some of you like to be bored. That's all right. <laughs> I don't like being bored. Keep it exciting. Keep it fun. Keep it moving. John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I love it. I quoted it in first service, but it's one of my favorite things that I heard Casey Treat say years and years and years and years and years ago. And it's always stuck with me. And it's always reminded me to get back in the word. He said, if you're struggling in a certain area, then you have, you're lacking truth in that area. He said, you're, so every time I'm struggling in a certain area, whether it's finances, whether it's healing, whether it's believing God for a neighbor, a relative, a sick person, whether it's believing for a miracle, you know what? The answer's in the word. And I get the truth on that situation, and I begin to speak that, I begin to meditate on that, and I begin to confess it over and over and over. I can do this. I can do all things through Christ's strength. Not just Paul. I put myself in it. And today, at the end, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things. What I want you to do is write down your declaration of faith. Write down some of the promises that God has given you. Write down and speak it out and declare it for his glory. So number one is truth. Number two is talents. Recognize your unique gifts and abilities and use them for his glory. Tim talked about, he preached that one for me, so I don't have to. He talked about going to growth track so you can get, you can learn some of your gifts and talents, but it's true. We all have different unique gifts and talents and abilities, but a lot of people want to be something else, or they want to look like someone else, or they want to have someone else's gifts. God designed you specifically so that you can fulfill your call and accomplish your purpose with what he's given you. So you don't have to be like anybody else. Those who compare themselves among themselves are not wise. That's what the book of Proverbs says. So we don't want to do that. He has given you the right tools for the job. He's given you the right tools. So the first one is truth. The second one is talent. The third one is tools. How many of you have been trying to work on something, ladies or gentlemen, or young people, you're trying to work on something, figure something out, and you don't have the right tool for the job. Has that ever happened to anybody in here this morning? Is that the best thing ever or what? No, you're like, where's the tool? I need this or I need that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm the one that I'm, I'm, I have four or five hammers, but when it's time to hang a picture in the house and I need just one to put a little nail in, can't find a hammer. I'm using a wrench on the side of the wrench on the nail or something, smacking my finger instead. And I had the right tool for the job. Or 
Jack and Zach, and they'll be working on the motorcycles, and I can't find the number 10 millimeter wrench because I took it somewhere and took it off, and I don't know where it is, but it's the only one missing in the whole toolbox is the one I need. <laughs> it doesn't happen to anybody else in here, but it, it's like, come on. But God has given us the right tools for the job. He's given you everything you need. He's the God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in us. See, I just have to repent lately a lot because I feel like it's like time to take the limits off. Unleash. God is the God of unlimited resources. And here I am worried about something. And I'm just like, why? God, your hand is upon me. I don't need to worry about that. I don't need to worry about this. I'm going to just say, forget it. You're the God of unlimited resources. You've given me the tools I need. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. If you don't have a clear target, you can't hit it. I don't know how many of you have ever done archery or hunting or, I don't know, thrown a ball. I mean, you, you have a target. You're trying to hit something. If you can't see it, you can't hit it. And so God wants us to see with the eyes of the Spirit. He wants to open up and unlock your vision from the inside so that you can see the target, so you can see the direction, so that you can see where he wants you to aim and shoot. Amen? I got a witness? Amen? Amen. Caesar, you're not my witness? Yeah, he knew he. He knew he had my back. He's a shooter. A shooter from way back. Clear front sight tip. That's right. Keep that thing ready. If you didn't get that, it's okay. You had to go in the Marine Corps to get that. That was the inside. <laughs> well, he could be in other services too. I was, great. I was just saying that one. That was how we were trained. Maybe they train everybody like that. The truth, the talents. These are five T's that will transform your life. I always ask myself when I'm putting a message together, if anybody does anything that I tell them this morning, is it going to help their life at all? And I have to say, sometimes I just do, okay, start over. If they do anything I told them, they're going to do anything. Just sounds like good to hear myself talk. But I don't want to be up here to hear myself talk. I want to make a deposit in your life by the Spirit of God that's going to produce. So if I give you something that you can apply to your life, you can apply to your marriage, you can apply to your job, you can apply to your, your neighborhood, your friends, your gifts, so that God can anoint you and develop you so that you can function in maximum capacity, then that's what I want to do. That's what I want to put together. I want people to say, yeah, I got something out of that and it, and it made a deposit in me by the Spirit of God. I want you to know that God has got special things just for you. Just for you. So that you can enjoy walking with him in fullness of your potential. A friend of mine is not here this morning, but he has a, a diesel truck. Maybe he's watching on the, the video. But he, it's, it's only running on six out of the eight cylinders. So I had a truck like that before. And I was just thinking, man, what's going on? There's just no power. Well, I find out it's only running on six out of the eight cylinders. It needed some new injectors so it could get the full fuel. Then I replaced the injectors, and all of a sudden, it's like full power. That's how we get sometimes in our walk with God. We get some clogged injectors. We allow this stinky thinking. We allow the voices of other things that are not in agreement with the Word of God to enter in and clog the, fl the flow of fuel from God's Spirit. The Holy Ghost power is, is constantly feeding your engine. And our spirit is just, we're sucking in the fuel of the Holy Ghost so we can produce power for His glory. And we're only running on six cylinders, and we have eight. Some of you are like 12-cylinder superchargers I'm seeing out there. I'm talking lots of horsepower. Other ones, you're a little more efficient. You're more like a hybrid. You don't burn a lot of fuel, but you get a long way. You know, we're all, we're all different for a reason. Amen? Hey, we're, we're all, we all complement each other. Some of you are gifted in prayer. Some of you are gifted in, in speaking. Some of you are gifted in hospitality and mercy. These ladies are producing this amazing lunch over there. That's their gifts. And we'll be thanking them for it in about 10 minutes. 
treasure. So the truth, the talents, the tools, the treasure, dig it out. I preached a message last year, maybe it was this year, I don't remember, but it was about the God of unlimited resources, that he gives us everything in the raw form, and then we have to develop that gift that God has given us for his glory. So every one of us gets something. Just think about it. The, the, the steel that this building was built with, is, it was in the earth as, a, as an iron ore. The, the precious metals that you're wearing on your fingers and around your neck, it was dug up out of the earth. And someone had to, to refine that so that it could have value to you or I. So the trees that your house is built with, someone had to run them through a mill to refine them so they'd be the right size lumber to build your walls and roof with. So God is, has given you lots of things in the raw, raw talent, raw treasure, raw ability. And we develop that by spending time with him, by prayer, by reading his word and allowing God to help us utilize these gifts so that we can flow and function and be value to the kingdom of God. When you function in your gifts and talents and abilities, you're bringing value to the body. You're bringing increase. You're bringing, uh, you're bringing promotion ability. You're bringing opportunity because when you step up, there's more room. There's more room and expansion takes place. Treasure. We have a treasure in earthen vessels. And it is it, that what? That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. I have to remind you as I remind myself all the time, it's not based on my personal performance. It's based on his gift. It's based on his power flowing through me. My faith is not in myself. My faith is in him and his ability to work through me as an imperfect vessel. I'm repenting all the time. Why? Because I blow it a lot. Thoughts that I shouldn't be thinking, saying things that I probably should take back. I know I'm the only one, but that's okay. If you ever run into that problem in the future, you'll know how to deal with it. Amen? So we want to, we want to develop. We want, to, we want to have this treasure, and we want to allow God to speak through us and realize that it's not based on your performance. So many times we get, if I was just a better Christian, if I just prayed more, if I just read my Bible more, God would be able to do this through me. That's not it. That's a lie. That's the counterfeit. You plug it into him, his grace empowers you to do all those things. We don't get there on our own. He brings us through and equips us to do it. Amen? So the last one is triumph. Have a victorious attitude. Failure is not an option. It's not an option. When you're with Jesus, you're on the winning team. It might look like you're down, but you're not. It's not over. You might look like you're sinking, but he's about to pick you up. You are in the hands of God, and he's going to make sure he's the author and the finisher. And he who begun that work in you is able to perform it. He's able to complete it. There's just, a, there is such something special happening in your lives right now, and some of you aren't recognizing it yet, but I'm praying that illumination comes, and you'll see what the Spirit of God is doing in and through you. Some of you don't even realize the people that you're making an impact on right now in your life. Young people in this place, just stand up real quick. All the young people, high school age or younger, stand up. I just want to give you guys a hand. Stand up for God, being being for God. Jack, yeah. Amen. All right, sit down. That was good. No, I'm so proud of the young people. It takes a lot to stand for God as a young person. We need to continue to pray for them, equip them, give them the tools they need. Have victorious attitude. Don't grow weary. Thanks be to God who always, everybody say always. Always. He's a way maker. Doors are going to be open that seem to be shut for you. I'm telling you, you have so many different things happening that we don't even realize it. And I just, like I said, I just been repenting because I'm like, God, I know, I know this. Why do I even allow that thought? Don't entertain it. Don't entertain the thought. It says, take captivity. And this is special for someone in here and for all of us, for me. Take every thought into captivity that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. When these thoughts come, because they will, oh, you're not delivered from that addiction. Oh, you're, you're not healed. Feel the pain in your leg. Feel the pain in your back. Feel the headache. Feel this. You're not this. You're not that. Take that thought into captivity. Sorry. The word says this. I'm claiming my healing. I claim my victory. I claim my bank accounts and storehouses are full. I claim more than enough. I thank you for my neighbors. I thank you for my friends. They might look like they don't want anything to do with Jesus, but they do. They just don't know it. 
Amen. Make a declaration on the back of your page. Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Declaration. This is your homework assignment. I want you to, do, to write out a declaration for this, this next week. You don't have to do it all today. But while you're thinking about it, maybe God's speaking to you today after church and during service. I want you to begin to make a declaration about your life. God, I, am, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Something that you're going to say out of your mouth. You're confirming his word with your word. There's power in agreement. There's power when you put your voice to it. You're born again because you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. There's power. And I feel like God's challenging me to take this to another level in my own life. So I'm sharing it with you. But I just believe that you, when you declare it, you're confirming it. You're saying, God, your word says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Father, I thank you that, that, that everywhere I go, you've given to me. Father, I thank you for expanding my territory, enlarging me. Father, I thank you that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm going over, not under. I thank you I'm blessed coming, I'm blessed going. Father, I thank you that I'm more than a conqueror through you. Father, I thank you that I'm victorious through you. Father, I thank you that I meditate on your word. I'm strong, I'm courageous. There's nothing that can stop me because I'm on the winning team. You just begin to write things down or I'll write it for you and give you a copy of it. If you guys don't want to declare it, I'll give you something to declare for me. Amen. Well, I need help. I can write declarations all day long. You're blessed. Amen. I had something I wanted to speak over you. I was just, as I was meditating and praying over this this morning, but I wanted to, this is uh, this is something that just came up in my spirit before we go. It's not a time to look back or regret, but it's time to press towards the mark of the high call in Christ Jesus. He has a plan for you. It is sure and it is true. Bow your heads with me this morning. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for your power. I thank you for your anointing in this place. Lord, I thank you that you're just, you're, your spirit is just flowing across this place right now. You're touching hearts. You're touching lives. Father, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your blessing. I thank you that your word, your plan it is sure and it is true. Father, we say yes to you this morning. We say yes in Jesus' name. We receive that which you have for us. Holy Spirit, I thank you for what you're doing in us and through us. I thank you that you are manifesting yourself in a truth that we haven't seen before. Father, we thank you for that. If there's anyone here this morning and you haven't been able to say yes to Jesus, but maybe you're saying now, I need to say yes to Jesus. I need him in my life. He's the one who feels the brokenness. He's the one that heals the wounds. He's the one, he's the one who sets the captives free. So if you're in here this morning, you felt bound, you felt, or maybe not at all, maybe you just know it's the time. We just wanna pray for you. Anybody at all, you can say, you know what? I just need to say yes to Jesus. We'll pray for you. Anybody at all? I like to make sure we ask every time. And Father, I thank you for those who've already said yes to you. Lord, I thank you that today you bring clarification. I thank you for illumination. I thank you for motivation and inspiration, Lord, that they are gonna receive your strength, your endurance. You're trading your, your weakness for his strength right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it. I come against every cancer right now in Jesus' name. Every stinking cell that's trying to disrupt and overtake you, I come against it in Jesus' name. I command it to go. I thank you for the doctors. I thank you for the medicine, but I also speak in the mighty name of Jesus. And we come against this thing and we command it to die and be removed right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you this morning. I thank you that you're moving. I thank you that you're touching. I thank you, Lord, that we're a part of such a time as this. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Well, if you need prayer for anything specific, come up. We'll pray for you. Um, come on up. And then if not, hopefully you can join us for lunch across the street. Be blessed. Have a wonderful week. Look for avenues 
of revenue, increase, blessing, opportunities to reach somebody for Jesus, to tell them the good news. We love you. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.